Thanks for checking out this video. Don't forget, like and subscribe. I was really sad, you know, I mean, in a good, I mean, not in a good way, but I was just really sad watching it. It hit me hard because I've watched his whole career, as, as have you. Um, Honestly, I was much more sad wa watching on uh, Wednesday than I was here. Well, because it, at least here, it's like a big pay-per-view. There's 7,500 people in the building. It's a great match. It's a main event. He's the star of the show. Wednesday, it was like, I pretty much knew that was his last TV match. Yeah. But like nobody else did. And there's like nobody in the building and fans didn't know or buy it. And it was just kind of a match. And that one I was I was more sad about because it was kind of like, it's the last TV match I'll ever see with Brian Danielson. And like, well, I don't I even know how many people I, realize that. I, I, I think he'll be on TV at some point again. Dude, if I mean, he's wrestling a very, very limited schedule, it should be pay-per-view matches. That's right. what I think. Why? You're right. I just don't... you're right. If he's gonna do, if he's gonna do like three, four matches a year, they should every one of them should be a pay per view. Yeah, you don't want to just yeah. do a TV match. Yeah, yeah. So. I, I would, I would agree. Um, yeah, I mean, it may be his last TV match, but uh, I want to say I was... this too because the ending of the show was it was a downer. I mean, Brian Danielson uh, got yeah. killed in his hometown. Yeah, absolutely obliterated. Well, not not hometown, but home area. Well, home area, and he was he was you know I mean, Aber out. Aber Aberdeen's not really that close. We're split hairs here, Dave. Everybody in the building, this was his hometown. And he was killed, and that was the end of it. Now That'd be like, that'd be like saying uh, my hometown is Stockton or Sacramento. Brother, you got a worked P.O. box. I don't want to hear about any of this. <laughs> I do too, in fact. Now, here's what I was going to get to. I was going to bring up that, that, you know, you finally went, you finally, without no problem, I didn't have to coerce you to go to the press conference. And aside from Don Callis, I mean, what a nothing press conference. Yeah, we could talk about that later, that cretinous. But anyway, uh, here's the point I was trying to make. So I've actually been to three live major events that I've heard a lot about tonight after this Brian Danielson thing. Mm -hmm. Because everybody was talking about when's the last time people left like a major pay-per-view so sad. And they brought up WrestleMania 39, which was when... Uh, it was Cody Rhodes uh, lost. That was Cody losing. They brought that's a, up that's a that's a different kind of sad. They brought up WrestleMania. That was more of a mad, but a, a business. You know, it's a business mad. They brought up WrestleMania twenty six. Which one was that? Which was where Undertaker beat Brock. Oh no no where Brock oh Brock broke, broke the streak. Oh yeah Brock Brock beat where Undertaker. Brock broke the streak yeah yeah yeah, yeah of, course, of course. So here's here's what I want to say about all because I was at all three of these matches. I'll name the third one last because that's the one this was the closest to. So people were like shocked when Cody lost, but like there everybody was talking about it on the way out. Like what the hell happened? I can't believe it. They were just like shocked and you know the Undertaker uh, Brock. People were shocked. They were Nobody. shocked, but there's a big difference, and it's quite it's ironic. They didn't leave sad because Brian Danielson won the title in the main event. Yeah. So they all left happy. Yeah. The closest I can remember to what this was like leaving the Tacoma Dome was WrestleMania 30. Uh, no, not WrestleMania 30. WrestleMania uh, 26, which was the one in Glendale just... where Shawn Michaels lost oh, beat, beat, beat Rick, beat and Rick, retired. Beat... No, we're sh we're oh, Undertaker oh, oh, Sean Michaels. Oh, Undertaker Undertaker Sean and he retired. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. will never forget it because this this would be similar to that. Well, actually. I was at both, and I could tell you when the Undertaker beat Shawn Michaels, like the lights came up, they told us we could all go home, and like everyone just starts walking out of the building. They just it was the weirdest thing I've ever seen. They just quietly walked out of the building. Some of them were kind of mumbling to each other, but like there was no excited talking. There was no anger. It was just like all of these fans that grew up with Shawn Michaels, like they saw the end of his career, and they knew it was coming at some point, but it was just they quietly left the building. It was the weirdest thing. And it was very much like that for this. What, what about what about when Rick retired? Uh, it wasn't, it wasn't because I think that was like the middle of the show. So there was like more stuff. It was like the, the yeah. edge match in the main event was awesome. Yeah. That, uh, But anyway, so tonight it was like very much the same thing where – you know, they kill Brian Danielson. Nobody comes out to save him. They do the the heavy heat angle. They get the stretcher and they carry him out. And then the lights kind of go up. And, and it was like everyone just quietly stood up 
and they just quietly started leaving like not angry or sad or I mean, they were sad but like it was like they were leaving a funeral it was really I was, weird I, I was sad and then i will say there was one funny thing the biggest heel on the show was justin roberts because really? the lights come up and everybody starts to slowly quietly file out and it was just like you know quietly filing out and then all of a sudden this poor guy justin roberts gets on the house mic and he goes I'd like to thank you all for coming tonight. Please drive safe. And then everyone goes, boo! And they start booing poor Justin Roberts because that was like, that was the finality that this is the end of the show. Nobody else is coming out or whatever. But mm -hmm. man, it was weird leaving. Like it, when the show was over, it was just a quiet, slow, sad walk to the exits. And that was the end. Never seen that before in AEW ever. And I've gotten to a lot of pay-per-views. So well, and they, could, they could have had him win like Sting at the last match, but they had him I lose. don't think he wanted to do that. Well, Sting didn't either. Sting wanted to lose, too. Well, sure, but I don't think Sting but, wanted to be murdered in his hometown. It's pretty clear well, Brian, Brian wanted Brian, to be, like, killed off. Well, I mean, the whole thing is, is, is you know, like, the, the same reason Sting did that and the same reason that, um, you know, many other people in, in different matches have, have retired and, and wanted to lose in their last match is because of the feeling that you you when you when you leave... This is the mentality. You owe the business the idea that you are going to make someone a big star. You do not leave on a win. And I mean, most people end up, most people end up in their retirement matches winning. I mean, more than not, I've seen both. Um, you know, because it's the happy ending and they get the big celebration at the end. You know, or even with Rick. You know, I mean, it was, it wasn't the happy ending, but he still he got still got the big celebration the next day and everything. And he came back, which which I think I think I was pretty sure he was coming back. I mean, it was like, you know, the dif the difference is is that like Brian and Shawn Michaels, you know, and uh, you know they left on their own. It was their decision. Rick, it was Vince McMahon's decision. Vince said like, you're retiring. Tell everyone you're retiring. And and Rick didn't want to retire. So I knew, you know, like he's going to leave Vince and he's going to wrestle again, which he did many times. Um, so yeah, I mean it's it's the idea that you would that you would lose on the way out to make someone, but in his case, I think he wanted to do something for you know Claudio and Wheeler and his buddies and and just basically make them as much heels as he possibly could, and and that was his goal to to leave the business in a way where you are putting somebody over and making somebody hotter and you're. You know, you're sacrifice. You know, not sacrificing, but that's what that's what you would do for the business if you were leaving the territory. You know, guys that left the territory, nobody left on a win in the territory days. You know, you always lost on the way out of the territory. That's just how it was done. Um, and you know, I think that that's probably the, um, you know, maybe the mentality that he that he had. I mean, it's funny because I've been so thinking about like, you know, I always think like the first time I ever saw Brian live was show you that me and you were at at the King of the Indies. But I had seen him, um, you know, for a while on, on tapes and everything. The first I mean, I go back to that Shawn Michaels San Antonio promotion where he was the masked American dragon. And I mean, um, you know, Shawn had TV um, and. So I I don't know like it, you know, um Brian started with Lance the late Lance Cade and um those were like the two big ones there's a couple of others who who never made it that people thought they would but but Sean and and um you know Brian and and Lance Cade were like the ones that every you know everybody thought Lance Cade would end up being a bigger star than he ended up being you know he passed away young and all that too and Brian was one of those guys where from day one this guy was just you know like, you know, Akiyama or somebody like that, where just the first time Kurt Angle, you know, Jack Briscoe, the first time you see him, they're just they're just naturally great. You know, some guys, it takes them years. Brian Danielson, I don't know, he just had it. You know, I mean, he, he wanted it, he got it. Um, you know, he got much better, of course. I mean, he was a, a green guy. But, you know, I almost like was really reminiscing because, you know, the first time I saw him was with the King of Indies and I was sitting with Nick Bockwinkle, and Red Bastine, and it was actually a very important match in his career. And he and I have talked about this because we basically had different versions, not different versions, but like I knew half and he knew half, but neither of us knew whole, all of it, you know. Um, 
I'm sitting there watching, um, and I think it was Brian was wrestling Brian Kendrick. You do you, you remember that man? It was Spanky. I mean, yeah. Yes. Yeah. So 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 I mean, you were there too. So so I'm with Bastine and Bachwinkle, and as the match goes on, I mean, they're they're talking to me, and they're you know, and there's a point in the match where Bachwinkle goes to me and goes, you know, when I was world champion, man, I would have loved to have defended my title against this guy, you know, which was really high praise from from him and a couple more minutes so they do a bunch of stuff standing ovation there's red and there's nick standing up blah, 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 blah. dick buyer blah, 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 blah. He, he wasn't with us but he was not too far away um and red goes to me and just goes you know everyone from my generation if you if you say this they're going to get really mad which is circle of life i mean this happens now too you know, um, I'm sure Flair and Steamboat said the same thing when they saw Osprey and Takeshi a couple months ago in Greensboro. And he just goes like, you know, nobody wants to admit it, but this guy, it's like, he, he's better than anyone from our generation. And I go, well, he's 21 years old. Come on. Come on. He goes, no, honestly, he's better than anyone from our generation. So anyway, so then, um, you know, it's like this guy's just unbelievable. So. Bachwinkle goes backstage. Um, Bachwinkle just goes to me and goes like, I got to go. So he goes backstage. So this stuff I don't know, um, other than he told me he's going to go talk to Roland Alexander, who's the promoter. Now, Danielson knows this, and he's written in his book and everything. He goes backstage, and he goes to Roland Alexander, and he goes, points to Danielson, who was not supposed to win that tournament. And he goes, if you don't put this guy over, you're making a big mistake. And Roland, who, you know, he's got all these plans, but to him, like Nick Bonquicle, it's like, he says that the whole tournament changed. And then there was a lot of bitter people over that tournament because, you know, somebody else was supposed to win and, and then got very upset that an outsider was supposed to be one of the local guys was supposed to win, you know, over the tournament. That's what you would, we, we all thought. I mean, I was surprised that Danielson won. I didn't know the reason that he won. Roland never told me, but, but Danielson told me years later many years later and um you know Bachwinkle just goes you know that you know that and he comes back and um you know I mean he didn't know he didn't know that Roland was going to change all the booking because he said that but that was um you know I don't know that that changed his career but it it was a big you know it was a big deal at the time and you know so that's like the first I saw of the guy and then you know, because of that tournament, Ring of Honor started. And Brian really made, you know, Brian, Samoa Joe, um, those guys really made their name, you know, Nigel McGuinness too, in Ring of Honor, which, you know, who knows if that ever would have started. I mean, it, it started because uh, Doug Gentry and, and I think Gabe Sapolsky and Rob Feinstein, you know, got the tape of that King of Indies show and just was like, oh, my God, look at all this talent. We should, we should start a promotion because ECW had died and they were looking at some, you know, something – for their video, t you know, it's eventually, you know, Ring of Honor was starting to, to just put out videos so they could keep their video business going with new content, new live show content, because there was no more ECW, which the video business owned. And then, you know, Carrie came in to save the day because they didn't make money on it. And, you know, then Sinclair saved the day and then, you know, Tony saved the day. But, but you know, that tournament was the reason that was an ROH and maybe... You know, who knows? The the stars that were made, you know, in ROH. You know, I mean, that was a lot of what happened to, you know, to, to build AEW. And, and, you know, Brian obviously had a, he had a sensational career. Um, you know, I mean, bigger than I think he would have ever imagined, bigger than I would have ever imagined for him, even though I knew he was great. I, you know, I, I thought he would be one of those guys that, you know, like I would say, mm, you know, maybe a Chris Benoit Maybe not even as big, because Chris was a bigger guy. But, but I mean, I knew he would be a great wrestler. He would go to Japan. He'd be a, a, a junior heavyweight champion in Japan, or I, I expected that because he was that good. But, you know, to, to the, the levels that he got and, and the wrestler that he became, you know, I mean, he's, you know, I mean, for, for just matches, I mean, he's one of the greatest that there ever was. I mean, he's unbelievable, and um, I was I was quite sad watching it. It was, you know, when Excalibur, you didn't see this, but Excalibur was fighting back tears, you know, when, in, in the announce booth. I mean, you could hear him, you know, like, you know, crying, basically. Because, you know, Excalibur, look, 
that's PWG, right? Brian Danielson was one of the founding fathers, you know, big, big stars when they started PWG. When it, you know, not, I mean, before it became a big deal, you know, PWG was around for years and years before it became hot and had some of the best matches that, that there were anywhere. Before it became this big thing when, you know, when the celebrities started going and, and, you know, things like that, you know, when it really took off. But And Bri that was actually after Brian was in WWF when, when that happened. But Brian and the Young Bucks and Kevin Owens and uh, El Generico and Kenny Omega and a lot of those guys were like the guys who kind of started putting that one on the map. He put Ring of Honor on the map. He helped put PWG on the map. And, um, you know... Um, great career uniquely intelligent guy i mean that's the thing about his wrestling is like athletically you know of course very very good but his mentality as far as um the ability to mentally put together a match is um i don't know would you say i mean one of the best i've ever seen don't, don't you think i mean it's, it's certainly like, up there yeah i mean it's just like i mean i because one of the things i really like is is matches that that um are creative and thoughtful you know what I mean? And and they're they're you know, they're not predictable in a lot of ways. You know, they have twists and turns and, and Brian, you know, just you know, I mean, just one of the best I've ever seen at it. Um, versatile. Um, you know, he could do many different styles, every different he could do everything. He 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 was one of those guys who did everything, you know, brawling was great, technical wrestling was great. Um freaking name the award after the guy you know best technical wrestler um you know his you know flying i mean not the best flyer but pretty damn good i mean when i first saw him he was like a hell of a flyer and um yeah so that was the story of the you know it's like it's not like we didn't know it was coming and it was you know I, and i look I, I i mean i knew months ago tacoma was probably it but I didn't know yesterday that it was definitely it. I didn't know when I'm watching the match that it's definitely it. And then, you know, the finish, like this match was incredible, of course. But the finish was just a choke in the middle, you know. And, and it was in some ways what I would call a flat finish because, you know, I could go, you know, nobody, nobody thought that was the finish. And it just goes out. And as soon as it happened and the crowd really didn't know, like, wait a minute, wait a minute. You know, it's like... He lost, and it's like, and he's got to retire. And they, 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 it was really hard to, it's like it, it's a delayed thing, and then all of a sudden it's like it happened. You know what? We knew it was going to happen. We didn't know for sure which day, but this probably was the day. And um, and it was like, that's his finish. You know what I mean? And then they just destroyed him. Um, with, you know, you you would you, put the paper bag, the the plastic bag over his head, turned heel after first coming out to save him. Those guys beat the hell out of him. They tie, they uh, tied Darby Allen with duct tape in the corner, so he had to watch while they massacred the guy. And um, I was hoping Swerve would be the one to make the save, but uh, you know, you they they nobody really made the save. I mean, they threw a private party out there, which was weird. Well, at the end, they, all the baby faces came out to make the save. Yeah, I, I would have focused on one guy. I mean, it felt when it was over um, that the focus from the way the television cameras were going was, was Darby and Moxley. Yes, you know? I'm sure that is the long term. Moxley goes on a tear, is the top heel. It's funny, like, I, I've seen so much hatred for this John Moxley in the last few hours. And it's like, that was the idea. You're supposed to hate this guy. That was the idea. Exactly. One of these days, Darby. I mean, if they can if they can stretch it out a year, if Darby beat this guy in Tacoma next year and won the AEW. Oh, title, that'd be awesome. That'd be it'd awesome. It'd be a legendary moment for AEW. Yeah, yeah. I don't so, think gonna, I don't think it's gonna be that long. But. We'll see. Hey guys, did you love this clip? If so, you should join our channel. Just hit the join button and you'll have full access to every single show that we do. Wrestling Observer Live, Wrestling Observer Radio, The Brian and Vinny Show. All of them in full HD, full length, plus archives of all of your favorite shows. Click join today and don't miss out.